Hey everybody, good to have you uh, along with us this morning as we worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the head of the church. And it's so good to uh, be together with you even though we're online. <laughs> for now, we just want, want to say thank you for tuning in and coming on board to join us together as we worship Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's just get right into it this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness this morning, Lord. Thank you for your great love, O oh God, that we love you because you first loved us. And so, Lord, we're just going to bless you and honor you because you alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Love you, Lord. Like no other, I know 
can just continue on in this journey that God has put us on and it's a great journey <laughs> it's a wonderful journey because God is with us amen he's promised to never leave us said I'll never forsake you amen hallelujah you are my strength you are my strength
Taking my sin, I cross my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You were my
born even so come even so Amen, amen, amen. The Lord is coming. Glory to God. He is coming. Are you ready? We need to be ready. Praise the Lord. He's coming as a thief in the night. Hallelujah. He's coming for those that are watching and waiting for him. Those that are faithful. Those that are ready. Hallelujah. Those that love his appearing. Amen. Even so, even so, come Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.
Hello friends, it's so good to be here with you again this morning and uh, we're broadcasting right from my home, right here in the kitchen, dining room area and uh, the reason for that is very simply because we are moving. Our church is uh, going into a brand new location, not brand new, but a new facility for us and God has answered our prayers and we've been praying for quite some time now for a, a larger facility that we need. And God answered that prayer, praise the Lord. About a month ago or so, I made a quick phone call, uh, being impressed by the Lord to do that. Made a call to our to the owners of our present building that we're at, 17 Church Place in Kitchener, and just inquired if they had any larger uh, uh, properties around because we were in need of a bigger space. And uh, so as it turns out, they were looking for a smaller space. <laughs> So we just simply are flipping uh, locations. We're going into their building and they're going into ours. And uh, their building is right across the street, 20 Shark Place. So it can't get any easier than that. So we thank the Lord for that. And um, so we're uh, doing renovations at the moment. They're uh, putting up a bunch of walls and turning it into an office space in our location right now. So that's why we're here. And uh, so for the rest of September, we will be broadcasting uh, from our homes. And then on October the 4th, we will be having our very first service in our new location, 20 Shirt Place in Kitchener. And uh, that's going to be our uh, anniversary service as well, six years, praise God. God has blessed us with six years as a church family, Freedom Life Church. And uh, we just look forward to what the Lord is about to do. So I want to just... Uh, uh, welcome you to come on out. Of course, you know, right now we all have to reserve spots. Uh, we still have to maintain 30% capacity. And so we're going to get in there shortly to figure out what kind of space we have available to us now in our sanctuary so we can start making plans that way. So in the meantime, uh, this morning I want to talk to you about the subject of the yielded life of the believer. The yielded life of the believer. I was asking the Lord for a message and uh, because I don't want to just give you a sermon. Hear me now. Hear me now. I don't want to just give you a sermon. Anybody can do that. And there's nothing wrong with a sermon, but I love to have a fresh prophetic word from God for his people. And I was praying this morning because I had a few thoughts going on. I've had, I have a few uh, different uh, messages that, you know, I'm just kind of waiting on the Lord to bring to you, but... But this morning, as I was praying, I said, God, I need, a, I need a fresh word, a prophetic word, you know, for your people. What, what do you want me to speak on for this Sunday? And, you know, very, very quickly this morning, God gave me that word. And it's on the yieldedness, the yielded life of, of, of the life of the believer. And so that's what I want to speak to you about today. Now, the word yield means this. It means to give the right of way to another. When you yield, you are giving the right of way to another. Now, let me ask you a question here today. Have you yielded your life to Christ? Have you yielded your life to the right of way with God? Is your life yielded, your will, is it yielded to God's will? Now, there's a difference, I'm sure, as you already know, between a stop sign and a yield sign. And if you don't know the difference, and I probably would recommend that you not drive. <laughs> don't drive. Take a bus, drive your bike, uh, you know, get picked up. But there is a difference between a stop sign and a yield sign. Obviously, a stop sign, we all know that it means that you come to a complete stop, right? That's the law. You come to a complete stop when you approach a stop sign. Uh, of course, with a yield sign, it's totally different. It means be prepared to stop and to give the right of way to another. That's what a yield sign is. And there's no difference, friends, uh, with us in our Christian life when it comes to being yielded to God. What it means is that our we're moving forward. It means that we're, we're, we're doing something. We're going ahead. We're moving. But it, but, but, but it means that the yielded life means to be ready to stop. It means to be ready to yield according to God's direction. That's what it means. You know, we're going in a certain direction, we're, we're following a certain path, we've got a certain destination in mind. But when we come to a yield, stop, a yield sign, it means to be prepared to stop, 
And that's that, that because God's will, God's direction is what is the most important for our, our life. And so the, the word yield means to submit, it means to surrender, and it means to stop resisting. Because as I said, we can have a certain goal in mind, we can have a place we want to head to, spiritually speaking, in our life as a, as a believer and a follower of Christ. We can have a certain plan laid out, but that plan has to be, listen, yielded to God's plan. His plan overrides our plan. And so when we are moving forward, as we do, we've got to be moving, we've got to be doing something and progressing in the kingdom of God. But as we do, we've always got to keep in mind that we are yielded to God's plan. Amen. And so the battle between yielding and resisting God's will, because we can yield to God's will and we can also resist God's will. We know what God wants us to be doing and we can resist it because maybe we don't think it's the right time. Maybe it's not convenient. Maybe it's going to you know, make our plans not line up with what we want. There's all kinds of different reasons, excuses, uh, you know, for not yielding to God's plan. So, and that has to do with the flesh. It has to do with the flesh. It's also called the carnal life. It's also called the old life. And that is the reason that even the Apostle Paul, in I believe it's in Romans chapter 7, he talked about that battle, that spiritual battle that takes place in every believer. It's the battle of the flesh and the battle of, of the Spirit when it comes to God's will for our life. And the Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, the things that I want to do, I don't do. He said, the things that I don't want to do, I end up doing. He says, oh, what a, what a battle <laughs> that is raging within me. And he says, you know, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He says, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for that very deliverance. Amen. That victory. We have victory in Christ only when we yield our life, our desires, our ambitions, our dreams, our wants. When we yield our will to God for his will. That is when we have the victory in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, I got to tell you that I resisted God's will for at least seven years when I first got saved. I resisted God's will. In fact, listen, the very night that I gave my life to Christ, I can remember it so clearly even over 40 years later. The very night I surrendered my life to Christ, I knew immediately, don't ask me how because I can't even explain it myself, but I knew immediately that God was calling me to preach the word, preach the, preach the gospel. And I had no clue what that meant. I had no clue where to begin. All I knew is that night there was a call that came upon my life. And I did not understand it. And I, 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 I you know, talked to other pastors about it. And, you know, they gave me certain hints and, and you know, suggestions, uh, you know, how to go about seeking that call and fulfilling that call. But for seven years, I resisted it. And I was married to Julie uh, for uh, probably about three years. I got saved. And then about two years later, I, I got married to Julie. We'd be married for coming up to 41 years, I think. <laughs> I, I'm sure she can correct me on that, but I know it's over 40. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so for five years, seven years, resisting, five years being married to Julie, resisting God's will, knowing that he wanted me to preach, running from it. You know, I, I, could, I could give you all kinds of details, but I won't take the time to do that. But all, I, all I'm saying is that I did not yield my will to God's will. For, for those seven years, I, I set out to fulfill my will, even though I knew that God was calling me into the ministry. And I didn't really understand it, and I was running from it. And so those things happen. It's called a battle between your spirit and your flesh. And Paul uses the word yield five times in Romans chapter 6 regarding the battle that takes place between living a righteous life and living an unrighteous life, the spirit and the flesh. Take a look with me in, in uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Paul says this, he's speaking to Christians. He says, do not yield your members, in other words, your, your, your body, right? your hands, your feet, your mouth, your eyes, your ears, the functions of our body. He says, don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness 
unto sin. Because that's so often what we do. We yield our members. We yield our body, our desires, our cravings, you know, the lusts of the flesh. We can so easily yield those things as instruments on righteousness unto sin. But this is what he says. He says, but yield yourselves. Notice how many times he uses the word yield. Yield yourselves unto God. Amen. As those that are alive from the dead, spiritually speaking, spiritually dead. We were spiritually dead when we do not yield ourselves to God's will. And he says, and your members as instruments of what? Of righteousness unto God. There is the difference right there. And then in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, Paul continues. He says, do you not know that to whom you yield yourself, you are servants to obey. He says, don't you understand that? Whoever you yield yourself, you become that person's servant. If you yield yourself to God, you become God's servant. If you yield yourself to the enemy, you become the enemy's servant. It's that simple. It's not complicated. And then he goes on to say, His servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So those are the two choices that we have in regards to who we're going to yield to. That's all there is. There's no neutral ground. There's no, well, let me think about it. Let me consider it. Let me pray about it. No, you are either yielded right now, this very moment, you are either yielded to God's will or you are yielded to the enemy's will, which really is your own will. That's what Paul is saying. And then in Romans chapter 6, verse 19, he goes on to say this, For as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. Paul is talking about your former life, <clears throat> the kind of life that you used to live, the kind of life that God has delivered you from through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul says, as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity. Now he says this, he says, even so now, now yield your members servants to righteousness and to holiness. I suggest, you know, I recommend that you read Romans chapter 6 and get it into your spirit and, and see the battle between the flesh and between your spirit. The battle between living righteously and living unrighteously. The battle between living holy and living sinful. It's going on all the time. And that's why we've got to make it our choice. We've got to be intentional that we're going to choose to serve God. We're going to choose to yield our life and all of the ambitions and desires and dreams and plans and hopes and everything else that we have in this Christian life. We yield it to God knowing that his way, his will is best for us. Hallelujah. And so why is this so important? The reason why is because many Christians are living for their own pleasures. They're living for their own ambitions. They're living for their own will. They're living for their own understanding on what is right or wrong to them. That's so, that's so serious. We can't lean upon our own understanding what we think is right, what we think we ought to do. Because the Bible is very clear. In fact, not once but twice in the book of Proverbs, we are warned that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the way ends in death. Spiritual death, physical death, just death, period. And so that's a really strong war warning from God's word. There's a way that seems right. Do not lean upon your own understanding. If there was ever a, a scripture passage that we needed to get into our spirit today, it's Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. I don't even have to quote it to you because you already know it. You've heard it over and over and over again, that we are to acknowledge God in all of our ways and he will direct our path. Do not lean upon your own understanding. Amen. Trust in God with all your heart. And so I want to really urge you as believers in Christ, I want to urge you as a life of a believer that you yield your life, you yield every part of you, every, every single aspect of your life, yield it to God. And see what the Lord will do for you. Glory to God. Because there are many today that are not yielded to God's will. Yes, they go to church. And, you know, yes, they, they, they like to hang out with other believers and Christians. They like to go to, you know, to have a coffee and talk. And, and there's all kinds of, you know, things that we like to do. But are we yielded to God's will? That is so important today. 
because there are Christians today that are living for themselves and they're not living for God, period. They're living to satisfy their own desires of the flesh. And so whatever, you know, it takes to make that happen, that's what they set their hearts on to do. Money, right? Bigger homes, material possessions, uh, you know, fame, fortune, person, uh, you know, uh, having, uh, be becoming a personality, so to speak, you know, uh, be, uh, becoming popular with people, you know, having positions above others and, you know, all of those things of the flesh. And there are Christians today that are seeking those things. And Paul talks about that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 to 26. Those who oppose God's will, those who refuse and reject to yield themselves to God. This is who Paul is referring to, believers. He says, opponents to, to God, <laughs> opponents to God's will must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance. Look at leading them to a knowledge of the truth and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil. Now look at this, who has taken them captive to do his will. Paul is not regarding or referring to unbelievers. He's referring to Christians, believers that have walked away from the truth, believers that have rejected God's will, rejected the, the truth, rejected the knowledge of God's word, and just set their own course. They've set their own course, and that's what they're going to follow. That's what they're going to pursue. Not God's will, but their will. And Paul says it's a very dangerous trap. It's a dangerous path to follow, because sooner or later, as you continue on this dangerous path, opposing God's will, Paul says that the devil takes them captive to do his will. That's the danger of it. And how could the devil think about it? How could the devil have that kind of control and power over God's people? It's not hard to figure out. It's simple. It's because we give it to him. We give the devil that kind of control and power. We do that when we resist God's will and we go our own way. It's that simple, friends. When we know better, but we do it anyways. We know better. We know what God wants, but we don't listen. We just do what we're going to do anyways. And that's a, a work of the flesh. That's a work of the flesh, the, the passions and the desires of the flesh. And I've been driving now for over 40 years. And, uh, you know, I think only twice now I've had a, an actual ticket. I've been pulled over a number of times, but I think only twice I've had an actual ticket. But I'll share with you some years back uh, something that happened to me. Uh, it was early morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning. And it was dark. And I was heading to work and, you know, what a great day this is going to be. You know, heading to work, no traffic on the road. You know, I'm doing a great speed uh, down. Uh, I won't, I, I think it's a highway. I'm not exactly sure where I was heading. But I was just uh, enjoying the morning. It was quiet. There was no nobody around. <laughs> and the next thing you know, this car pulls out in front of me. I don't even know how it happened. It happened so quick. And all of a sudden, I had to slow way, way down. And this car in front of me now was just, you know, moving along at such a slow speed. And I was, I was moving at such a, a great speed. And I, my flesh reacted. My flesh rose up because of that. And how dare this person, you know, uh, you know interfere with, with me going to work and, and, and my wonderful day that I was going to have. How, how dare... This person cut out in front of me. Well, you see, I didn't realize that, you know, God has his ways and his methods of teaching us patience, teaching us self-control. Well, I didn't learn the lesson. <laughs> and I got extremely upset. <laughs> and I thought, how, how dare they, they uh, you know, make me slow down and I, I'll show them. And I put the pedal to the metal and uh, drove around pass them on the other side of the road. There, that, that'll teach them. <laughs> and I'm moving along at, at my normal, at my speed again, my high speed. And uh, next thing you know, I, in the rear view mirror, I see these red lights flashing. That's never a good sign. And so I pull over and I think, oh, I've been caught. You know, there's no way I can excuse it. I'm caught. 
I pull over and uh, the police officer comes up to the side of my car and begins to ask for my uh, driver's license and insurance and all of those things. And you do realize that you uh, broke the law. You do realize that what you did was wrong. And yes, yes, officer, I, I do. And just do whatever you have to do, officer. I'm, I, I, I'm guilty. I admit it. And, you know, that's humiliating enough. But the more humiliating thing of that whole experience was that as the officer is there writing me up a ticket, the car that was in front of me begins to drive slowly past us. And I can just imagine what that driver is probably thinking. He might be laughing, chuckling, whatever. But I, it was not a good day for me. So I learned my lesson. <laughs> and it's always good to yield, you know, to those things. Yield to those things. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. Don't demand your rights. When things like that happen in life, yield to yourself and realize that God is perhaps teaching you something in all of this. Such a good idea to, uh, to yield. And so when we are fully yielded to God's will, guess what? Our desires change. We're no longer, you know, being led by the passions of our flesh. We're not, no longer being led now by, you know, um, our frustrations or our bouts of anger and, uh, you know, disappointments and all of those things that come along. When, when we are fully yielded, hear me, this is so important. When we are fully yielded to God's will, we now become dependent upon, upon His will and our desires now line up with His will. Now we want to be in God's house. Now we want to pray and worship and fellowship together with God's people. Now we want to support God's work. Now we want to be with our church family, hallelujah. Those are the desires that begin to work within our spirit as we are lined up with God's will, amen. And friends, that is why Hebrews, I have it on the screen here, it is such an important uh, verse of scripture for these last days, especially as we come closer and closer to the coming of Jesus Christ again for his bride. Hebrews 10 verse 25, it tells us very clearly, it commands us as God's people, as the church, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Did you notice what that says? As the manner of some is. In other words, there are groups of believers that are going to reject gathering together. They're going to oppose it. They're going to neglect it. They're going to disobey God's word in that whole area because they think they don't need it. They think it's not necessary. You know, they'll still read their Bible. They'll still pray. They'll still do this. They'll still do that. But they won't come together with the church family because they just don't feel it's necessary. And yet the word tells us very clearly right here, do not forsake church. Do not forsake coming together with your church family as the manner of some is. But exhort one another. There it is. Encourage one another. That's the whole purpose that we come together on Sundays, on Wednesdays, whenever it is that you meet together as a, as a church family. It is so that we can encourage each other. We can bear each other's burdens. We can pray together. We can believe God together. We can listen to the word together. We can, we can seek the Lord together. We can fellowship together. We can honor each other together. Exhort one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So much the more as you see the day approaching. So much the more. In other words, as we see the signs of Christ's coming, the writer to Hebrews is telling us, God is commanding us, you need to be coming together even more, even more, even more, often, as much as you can. Because that is going to be our safety in these days of peril, these days of danger, these days of violence, these days of destruction, these days of anarchy, these days of disaster. Friends, I cannot stress enough. I implore you, stay together as a church family. If you're not in a church right now, you need to be. 
You need to come together. You need to find a church where you can fellowship, where you can, where you can fit in, where you can be involved, where you can become a part, a very serious, a very uh, necessary, important part of that church family. Glory to God. So that you can have brothers and sisters in your life. You can have a pastor. You can have leadership team with you, over you, helping you, instructing you, counseling you, praying with you, encouraging you. You know, assisting you in every way, personally, physically, spiritually, in your marriage, in your finances, in your health, every single aspect of your life as you yield that to God, hallelujah, in the setting of the church family, then God will do miraculous, marvelous, m incredible things in your life. Even now, glory to God, no matter how doom and gloom this world may appear right now in our nation, in our cities, in our churches, in our, uh, in our uh, environment, our homes, uh, you know, the workplace, the economy, the government, everything, everything, everything. God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. But he wants you to yield your life to him totally, completely. He wants you to be a part of his church family so that you together along with others can, can nurture one another in the word. Hallelujah in your faith, and in God's will for your life. Amen. I want you to listen as I close this message today. I want you to listen to this severe wording from God. And this is to Israel. This is to Judah. And this is during the time of King Hezekiah, when Judah had not uh, kept the Passover feast for many, many, many years, hundreds of years. And now the Lord is again instructing Hezekiah, to reestablish the keeping of this all-important feast of Passover. And it was such a sacred time. And the people had just, you know, come back. Israel had just come back from being in Assyria uh, as, as captives for many, many years. And now Hezekiah was rejoicing as he reinstituted again the Passover uh, feast. And it says this, uh, because Israel, Israel, Judah had willfully forsook the house of God during these years. And it says this in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 and verse 8. Hezekiah says this to his people. Now do not be stiff-necked. Don't harden your neck. Don't harden your heart. Right? Don't resist. Don't reject what God wants to do as your fathers were, but yield yourselves. There's that word again, friends. Yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, enter into the house of God. Enter into the house of God, the sanctuary which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God. Why? Why? That the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. Sounds pretty serious to me, and I think it would sound serious to you as well. Why would God give Judah the people of God, such a serious warning. Well, let's bring that up to our today. Let's bring that up to that warning to today. Why would God, as we read in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, why would God give us such a serious warning? Don't forsake the house of God. Don't forsake church. Don't forsake assembling together. Don't forsake, you know, worshiping, praying, uh, you know, ministering to one another together. Why would God give us such a serious warning today? I'll tell you why. It's because of the enormous price that God paid by giving us his son, Jesus, his only begotten son, who took our sins upon himself for one reason, and that was to appease the wrath of God against sin, against sinners, against sinful man. God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. And so Jesus yielded his will to the Father. He set the example of yielding his life and his will. He said, I always do the will of my Father. You know, I, I always seek to please my Father. That was Christ's whole purpose on this earth. And he completed that yieldedness on the cross. Hallelujah. And it was not an easy thing for Christ there in the Garden of Gethsemane. As he prayed to the Father, he said, Lord, if there, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass. But 
But nevertheless, there was no other way. He yielded his life totally. He drank that cup, that bitter cup. He shed his blood. He went to the cross. He took the nails. He took the stripes upon his back. He took the thorn. He took the thorns upon his brow. He took it all. He took all the suffering so that you and I could be saved and set free and redeemed back to God again. If there's any other way, Lord, let this cup pass. But then he said, but not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. That's really where it comes to you and I. As we yield our lives as believers to the will of our Father. You know, there's an old hymn that we don't sing too much anymore, but the words are still so powerful as they always have been. That hymn speaks about the yielded life. It speaks about seeking God's will and not our own. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Now, how does it go? <laughs> Make me and mold me after your will while I am waiting. Yielded. There's that word, yielded and still. Mold me, make me, shape me, you know, purge me. Do with me as you must. Break me, right? Break me, cleanse me, sift me. Lord, you know, you know, do whatever you've got to do in my life. Make me, mold me after your will, not my will, your will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. And I pray that that is your response to God. Even now, as you've heard this message, and I pray that this has been a prophetic message for you. I pray that this has been a timely message for you. I pray that as you seek God, as you continue to serve God, as you continue to follow God on this journey that we're all on together, I pray that you will yield your life, yield your body, yield yourself totally, completely, yield everything in your life to God and watch and see what he will do for you, friends. He will bless you. He will use you. He will fulfill your desires because your desires will become his desire. And I, again, I, I want to stress again as I close this message. Oh, 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 do not forsake your church family. Do not forsake your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Do not forsake your ministry. Do not forsake your giftings that God has entrusted to you because others need that. They have need of you. They have need of your plan and your purpose. They have need of your position in the church, in the body of Christ. And so let me pray for you just before we go. And so Lord, I just bless every viewer here today. And Lord, I pray God that as they have tuned in to this broadcast, to this message, I pray God that it has spoken to their hearts. I pray God that it has not only challenged them, but encouraged them. I pray that it has convicted them. I pray that it has given them, Lord, such a, a, a release, Lord, a release from the old life into the new life that you have purchased for them through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And God, I just believe together with them. I decree together with them, God. Lord, not their will, but thy will be done, beginning right now, right now, in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I thank you, God, for the new things that you're about to do, God. We're not going to live according to the flesh. We're not going to walk according to sight, according to what we see in the headlines, what we see in the news reports, what we see in social media. Lord, our ears are tuned out to all of those voices all of the doom and gloom messages, God, because God, our faith is steadfast, secure, and solid in your word. Glory to God. And so, Lord, I pray, Father, for a new thing now to transpire in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for tuning in to uh, our Freedom Life Church broadcast. And uh, come October the 4th, we'll be holding our very first uh, uh, anniversary service six years as a church glory to God and if you would like to uh, 
find out more about our church if you'd like to come check us out sometime please go to our website at uh, freedom life church international dot com and uh, you can uh, see all kinds of information there and uh, we'd love to connect with you you can also give us a phone call and uh, call our office at 519-998-2421 519-998-2421 and we would love to talk with you god bless you and bye-bye for now